Hey guys, this is CSpace from CrackRoll.com and I'm just making a little video here to show you the uh, process that I go through for setting up the servos on the swash plate. As you can see, I've already taken the head off of the helicopter and that's because I'm going to be using this uh, swash leveling tool, which we'll get more into in a little while, uh, to make sure that the swash plate is level. Uh, but right now I'm going to concentrate on making sure that the servos are centered and that the radio is programmed correctly so that all the servos move in the correct direction. So what I've done right off the bat is I'm not going to power the helicopter from the main flight back battery. I have a small nickel metal hydride pack which I'll be using straight into the receiver just for programming purposes and I've also unhooked the motor from the ESC so that I don't accidentally spool it up while I'm playing around with the pitch settings. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to check the direction of the servos. So I'm going to power up my transmitter. I've already I've already uh, programmed a model for this and we'll see which direction the servos are going in. I'm going to power up the receiver now. Okay, and I've just temporarily secured the servo horns onto the servos just to give me a better indication of which direction they are going in. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the aileron direction. And they're actually going in the right direction. The way I know they're going in the right direction is when I give it left aileron, I want the swatch plate to tilt this way to the left, tilt down to the left. So I can see the servos going this way, which would push it this way. If this was up here and that gets pushed that way, then it's going to go left. So I know that's going in the right direction. The right servo should be doing this, the opposite of what the left servo is doing when you're giving it left and right aileron input, which it is. Um, then I can also check the elevator direction, which I'll just spin this around. And it's kind of hard to see the elevator servo, but it's in here. And what I want to do is uh, when I pull uh, back on the elevator stick, I want the swash plate to tilt back. And when I push forward on the elevator stick, I want it to tilt forwards. So if I pull back and push forward and look at what the servos are doing, I can see that the two uh, servos on the front, when I push the stick forward, are going forwards ever so slightly and the one in the back is going forwards as well. Which if I look at the linkages I can see that that's going to result in this motion. So my servos are all going in the right direction as far as elevator and aileron. Uh, the next thing to check would be the pitch direction. So when I push the throttle stick to the maximum, I'm going to want the swash plate to raise up and when I pull it back to zero, I want the swash plate to go down. So again, I'm just going to look at the servos and see what they're doing when I give it max pitch. And I can see looking at the linkages and looking at uh, what the servos would do to the linkages that, again, the pitch direction isn't going in the correct direction. Now what if it's not going in the right direction? Well, the first thing we checked was the aileron and the elevator function. If those are going in the wrong direction, then what you need to do is you need to go into your radio. However, uh, you get to the feature and uh, go to your reversing, and you can reverse your servos here to make them sure that they're going in the right direction. Once you've done that, if you now find that your pitch is going in the wrong direction, then you can go into your swash mix, or the equivalent on your radio, and you can actually select the pitch and you can reverse the direction of the pitch. Once you've done all that, you'll find that your servos, I should have said beforehand, before you start doing any of this, make sure that your servos are all at zero subtrim. So now we know that all the servos are going in the right direction, we can take a look at uh, uh, how we're going to arrange the servo horns and then start hooking up linkages and see where we're at. So for the moment I'm just going to unplug this and make sure that my uh, throttle stick is at zero pitch right in the middle because that's how we're going to set this up. We want everything to be 90 degrees and we do that with it at zero pitch. I'm just going to unhook this now. Now, I'll just zoom in a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm looking at this servo right here, and I already put some uh, ball links on the servo arm, 
But what I want to do is I want to put this servo arm on the servo with the ball links straight up and down relative to the uh, to the servo. So it's going to be like a right angle. Um, and you know how the splines never line up with the servo arm, so I'm going to rotate the servo horn around as many times as it takes. Actually, what I should be doing is I should be doing this with it powered on so that the servo doesn't move. So I'm just going to switch everything back on again. Okay, I'm going to make sure my throttle stick is at mid stick. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the servo arm on the servo and I'm going to keep rotating it around until I find a spline location that gives me the uh, ball link. The locations for the ball links are straight up and down. And I think that's it right there. So actually I need to move these ball links over one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing for all three servos. Put the ball links on, screw the servos on, make sure that the this line that goes between the, uh, the ball links, like if you drew an imaginary line straight down there, then I would want that line to be straight down the middle of the servo. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'll be right back in just a minute. Alright, what I've done is I've put the servo horns back on the servos. I've made sure that these ball links are lined up perfectly with the center of the servo. And this is also the servo the sub trim is at zero. So that's perfectly at zero. This arm right here is also I drew a line like this. This arm is 90 degrees. Well, this line is 90 degrees to the top of the frame, and that arm is that's zero pitch. And I've done the same on the other side with the arm, arm on this side. I've also done the same with the elevator servo on the back here. So everything's hooked up now. And what I've done is I've dropped this swash leveling tool, which you can see right there, and you just pull off the head of the helicopter and you drop this tool down on the main shaft. And you can see this tool has three uh, points which line up with the three arms of the 120 degree swash plate. And you drop the leveling tool down onto the swash and each one of these three points should line up with three points on the swash and it gives you a real good indication on how level your swash is because these three points on the swash should match up and touch the three points on the leveling tool at the same time. If they don't you may need to adjust uh, one of the two of the links just to get it exactly right. Once you have that set up you have a mechanically perfectly set up helicopter. One other thing to note is at zero pitch when all these points are touching Go ahead and increase your pitch to maximum and check that these points are still touching. And if one of them is off a little bit, then you can go to the endpoint adjustment on that individual servo and just either increase it slightly or decrease it slightly so that these are touching again. And if you have the ability to, to change the amount of trim steps that are on your uh, radio, I would set that to as many as possible so that you can get as fine an adjustment on this as possible. So once these are all trimmed and, at, and all touching at the uh, highest range, Go back to the center, make sure they're all still touching the center. Let's go back to your lower range and then again check these. And if one of them is slightly, ever so slightly off, because every single servo is, is slightly different, then you'll need to either increase or decrease each one of these or one of these, however many is off, ever so slightly, just to make sure they're all touching again. That way when you're giving it maximum and minimum pitch range, all three of these are moving the exact same way. And that's your goal. demonstrate. Right now it's at zero pitch and I can move this through any range, pitch range, and I can see that the swash is level with all the points. And then you can pull this off and you can see. So we've got back, forwards, left and right. And that's it. Ready to continue. Now it's just a case of putting the head back on, hooking up the links, and setting the uh, the pitch range of the blades. And that's about it.